Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to just take a few moments here on uh, this Wednesday night to, uh, to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I trust that uh, uh, whatever plans you make, uh, that they will be happy and, and have a great time. Um, my, my theme uh, for Thanksgiving I got a couple of years ago uh, from Kevin James uh, when he said, Thanksgiving, man. Not a good day to be my pants, and so uh, I, I do. Uh, I do look forward to eating a, a few good meals on Thanksgiving, having some leftovers. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, give you a real, uh, a short message here uh, as we prepare to enter into the Thanksgiving weekend. And um, obviously, uh, the, the scripture I want to bring to you is First Thessalonians chapter five, uh, verse eighteen. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on on Sunday morning in our message there. Uh, But it tells us, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now again, we're very familiar with that. I'm guessing that that text was used around the country uh, for uh, Sunday's message, or if they have service tonight, it's it's being used tonight. In everything, give thanks. And uh, as a matter of fact, we did even talk about it this last Sunday morning. Um, but the thing that I really enjoy, and I again, I brought it out Sunday morning, is the wording that it's used. Because sometimes we can get into that, th- that thinking like, but it's not something that I'm thankful for. I, I, no matter how much I try, I'm not thankful for that thing. I'm not thankful for this bad thing happening. And and, and we can get kind of frustrated because I have to be thankful for that. What it tells us here, what it clearly says, is in everything give thanks. So again, it doesn't say because of everything. It says in. When you're in the midst of whatever you're in the midst of, you still need to be giving thanks. In other words, in life. We all have circumstances that come and they overwhelm us. God created us a three-part being. Spirit, we are a spirit. That's the part of us that will live forever, ever, ever. We have a soul and we live in a body. The body is the house you live in. It gives you access to planet Earth. Your, Your spirit is the part of you that's communing with God. That soul, though, is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's your able, it's your ability to learn. It's your ability to think. It's your ability to process those things and put them into action. But it's also how you feel about those things. All those things are made up in your emotions, in your soul. And so when God gave us a soul, he gave us all these emotions that come along with it as humans. And and I'm not going to get into that much more than I got into that. But is that the, the problem becomes in our life is when our emotions get off a little bit. When our emotions get off a little bit and we find ourselves sad depressed, overwhelmed, bitter, angry, all these negative, more more negative uh, emotions, when we find them getting off just a little bit, life can get off a little bit. The more you allow your emotions to get off, the more your life will have tendency to get off. And, and, uh, That's why he tells us that we've got to learn that in the middle of everything that's going on, whether it be good or whether it be frustrating, which much of 2020 has had the opportunity to be frustrating, right? But whether it be good or frustrating, we've got to learn in those situations, in those times, to remain thankful Not necessarily for them, but for who God is, for what he's done, for the blessings that he's given you. I was reading, I got got an email. Kenneth Copeland emailed me. He does it every now and then. I think it's a personal one, but it it could be, he could send it out to other people too. Uh, But he has emailed me an article 
uh, that he wrote on 26 things that we can be thankful for. So in the middle of everything, we can still be thankful for things, and he gave us 26 things, gave me 26 things. He may have emailed you too, but uh, I think he wrote it for me. And I was, I, 26, 25 of them were really good. One of them uh, he listed was your little furry friends, the little animals that you have. And, the, uh, and I'm like, man, that's not on my list. That's just not on my list. You like them? Cool. It's not on my list. Um, but, but again, sometimes when you're in the middle of harsh circumstances, you can struggle to find what to be thankful for. Well, go to a list like that. Go to something like that. that his, his list, you know, included salvation. It included your family. It included healing and health. It, it included your church family, it, it, the, God's word, his promises. All these things were on that list, and those are what God's saying. That's what God's saying. He says, in everything, you still have things to be thankful for because the circumstance that you happen to be in is not the end. But you've got to find your thanksgiving in order to change your emotions, in order to change your emotions so that you can get out of that that circumstance, that conundrum. Wow, that was impressive. Um, Psalm 100, don't have to turn there, but it tells us that when we get into thanksgiving, it gives us access to the gates of his presence. So again, if you're in your circumstance and you're trying to find the answer and you're, and you're allowing, and I'm not, let me just, you're allowing your emotions to control everything. You're angry at everybody, and you're you're bitter, and you're 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 depressed, and you're all, and you're allowing those things to happen. It's moving you from. You're not getting closer to his answers, to his presence. But thanksgiving, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. And so that that's where we need. To be. Now, sometimes it's hard for us to find that Thanksgiving button to hit. I read about it once in a book. I know it has nothing to do with anybody listening to these words. But sometimes we have a hard time finding our Thanksgiving button. And when I was thinking about that, because again, I get it. I get when you have things that, that come along that try to steal uh, that, that thanksgiving, is try to steal your peace and try to steal uh, your joy and try to steal this. I get it. I'm not standing up here saying, hey, y'all, everything uh, in life is, is peachy and, you know, rainbows, rainbows and unicorns and, and you just need to get, you know, just need to, if it's not like that, No. The, the Word of God is written in a way to make it very clear that God's best, God will bring you out. But when you're in the trouble, He's still there in the midst of you. You understand that the three Hebrew children still got thrown in the fiery furnace. You understand that Daniel still got thrown in the lion's den. You understand that the children of Israel still had to walk through the wilderness. Now, it wasn't God's intention for them to stay in there for 40 years, but they still had to walk through it. So I'm not saying that tough times don't come. Matter of fact, scriptures tell us just the opposite. That don't think it weird. Don't think it's strange when trials and uh, come your way and come knocking at you. Don't think it's strange. Because it's common to anybody that is a child of God that you're going to have things come your way. But there's a way out. And the way out comes through thanksgiving. And I, as I was thinking about this, I thought, man, you know what? The way out. There's a way. How do we get the, how do we get to find that button to push to say, 
I'm thankful. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for making me. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me. How do we find that button? We've got to stir something up, right? And, and, and the thought came to me. Go, go to Psalm 30, verse 5. You don't have to turn there necessarily. You're, uh, but, but if you look at Psalm 30, verse 5, it says, For his anger endureth but for a moment, his favor is life, weeping, that's that emotion, that's that sadness, weeping may endure for a night. Now again, notice he doesn't say, shame on you for weeping there, buddy. You're in trouble now because you're weeping. No, no. But it says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes when the light comes on, when revelation comes on. Light in Scripture is tied to the Holy Spirit. It's tied to the glory of the Lord. It's tied to the Word of the Lord. Those are all things, and and more, but those are things that it says when those things come, light comes and joy comes. And the thing that the thing that stuck out to me, how do we get that button? How do we push that button of thanksgiving? And I just heard I heard the Holy Spirit just say it like this is that it's through the joy of the Lord. That the joy of the Lord, or can we say it even like this? Stir yourself up by laughter, by joy. I know people, well, that's not spiritual, Pastor Thad. I, I beg to differ with you. Laugh, laughter is a spiritual, ma- a, a spiritual matter. Uh, over in, in Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22, it tells us that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So that what's a merry heart? That means, that's a heart full of laughter. It's a heart that you know. I start off. I start off this little message here with Kevin James' quote saying, "Thanksgiving, man, not a good day to be with my pants." Well, that's not very spiritual, Pastor. The joke may not be overly spiritual, but if you laughed, you have just instigated a part of your emotions that is controlled. By your spirit. Laughter and joy works like medicine in you to stir you up in your life. And to stir you up in the things of thanksgiving. Think about it. What do they give medication for? They give medication for, spirit, uh, for physical ailments. Uh, you, you might have high blood pressure. They have medicine for that. You might have... Um, you might have an infection in your body. They give medicine for that. Uh, you might have uh, 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 pain in your body. They have medicine for that. Let, let's go beyond that. What about, what about those that have depression? They give medicine for that. Heaviness of heart, uh, 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 mental distress, they have medicine for that. It's no reason why Jesus said, I have come uh, to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bruised. Because he came as light, which is, brings joy, and it works like medicine, and the word works like medicine on your life. Laughter and joy works like medicine. And again, the cool thing is, this isn't just a Bible fact. It'd be one thing if it was just a Bible fact that, that you go, okay, it's Bible says it, it proves it. But science proves it. The happier you, happier you are, the more antibodies your body produces to fight, fight infection. Up to 50% more, just the happier, happier you are. A small dose, of, I can't be happy. That's why you've got to stir it up. You've got to stir it up. You've got to kickstart it. you got to, sometimes it starts just by laughing, going, ha, 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 ha. 
But recognizing that joy is something that produces and starts stirring up your thanksgiving to where you can now start to say, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. A small dose of humor can increase your immunological function. Frequent and wholehearted laughing actually helps your body to fight off harmful diseases. Laughter decreases your levels of stress. If you laugh, there is nothing wrong with watching the movie Elf during the holiday season. Because if they can, if that movie can make you laugh, it's doing some stuff in you to remove you from the heaviness that the enemy is trying to bring on you. Laughing for 15 minutes a day burns up to 40 calories. It's a new weight loss plan. <laughs> Think about it. Jesus says, I w- unless you come to me as a child, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember that? Unless you come to me like a child. Now, now <laughs> children, yeah, well, that's because of the innocence of children. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce you to, <laughs> it's, it's, it's because they're just willing to accept anything. Maybe. But how about this? Children laugh at least three times more than an adult does a day. They know how to laugh. Have you ever been so caught up in a problem and your your child comes and goes, Daddy, and they got a big smile. I want to show you what I did. And again, that thing may not excite you very much. It might be that they just painted a painting on the wall. But it makes them so happy. And all you can think of is how much is this going to cost me to repair? Or I ain't got time for that because I've got this to take care of and that to care. i got bills to pay. And the kid's busy laughing. Listen, when your feelings start going bonkers or you start feeling overwhelmed, and you're having a hard time to find that Thanksgiving button to hit. That's a time where you need to begin stirring up your joy. Do whatever you need possible. I said, I said a couple of months ago in our, our church that find a good, clean comedian that you can listen to. And, and, and begin just laughing in the flesh. Just begin laughing. Because laughing, in the, it's, it becomes a spiritual battle. It becomes a spiritual tool in order to remove you from the heavy emotions, bring you into thanksgiving. Laugh. Find a community. Find a Jesse Duplantis video where he tells some of his uh, goofy stories. Find it. Get in there. Listen to it. Stir up your joy. And all of a sudden you'll find yourself finding that ability to be thankful. Think about this. The children of Israel never found themselves laughing and complaining at the same time. How many times did it say they cried out? They were crying and complaining. But when laughter was always met with thanksgiving. Laughter and complaining don't go together. Laughing and thanksgiving go together. If the children of Israel would have ever stepped over into joy or laughter, they'd have decreased their complaining and they'd have probably gotten to their promised land a lot quicker. Beloved, Psalm 35, 27 tells us that it's God's will, it's his pleasure to prosper, to bless his kids. We know that. Now, I, I, it's not worth even trying to argue. That's his desire. First Thessalonians says, in all things give thanks. We know that. Why? Because it's his will. So if it's his will for blessings and prosperity and it's, and it's his will for thanksgiving, it means those two things are tied together. Now 2020 has given us more than enough reasons to not, have th- not, to not give thanks, to not be happy. Uh, 
decisions that other people have made for us, it's, it, it gets very claustrophobic. I'm, 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 I'm kind of thinking that so much of the, the, the political unrest in our society comes because of the, the frustration that's storing up inside of us. So many reasons to complain, but, you know, it's kind of like Bill Johnson said, that all complaining does or proves is that you can hear the voice of the enemy. Because the voice of God says, I've got something bigger, I've got something better, I've got something good for you. So instead of being stressed, start laughing. This Thanksgiving, don't, don't, don't get around your loved ones and start rehearsing everything that's going wrong with, with the politics and the election and the, and, and the coronavirus and, the, and racial tensions. And don't, get, don't get around and start rehearsing all that because all that's doing is getting your emotions. I'm gonna, we're gonna, I gotta fight someone. Grandma, come here. I gotta fight. You know, I gotta fight someone to begin stirring it up. Let the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord laugh with your family. Laugh with yourself. Laugh. Watch something funny on TV. And by stirring up your joy, you stir up your thanksgiving. And by stirring up your thanksgiving, you step over into the, more, into the blessings of God. You step over into His presence like never before. And in His presence, well, in His presence is fullness of joy, correct? But in His presence is where you find life. Zoe life. Fullness of life evermore. Amen. So happy Thanksgiving. I love you guys so much. Make this a joyful holiday. Make it a joyful season. It's going to be the best one yet. I love you. God bless you. Go with God. Walk in his blessings. Prosper. Be in health. Even as your soul prospers. I love you.